here's your bait bucket. And I'll take the pack basket here. You ready to catch some fur, big guy? Oh, yeah. Don't fall in, Magnum. Oh, got muskrat. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Good job. What we're doing is uh, we're trapping, and let me tell you, there's nothing like trapping. Nothing else like it. I think we struck Oh, we out. got a coon. We do? Yeah. What do we got there, Magnum Mike? Oh, we got a, pretty sure that's a boar. But there's a trail coming down out of this woods, and they come down here into what's left of this cornfield, and they scrounge for what corn has been left after picking. So I think the first night we sat here, we had a double here. We had one over here, and then about 10 or 12 feet away, we got this one. But the whole thing is just trying to get your traps on location, and you're just having a good bait, a good attraction that uh, is going to keep the coon there. These are what we call DP uh, dog-proof traps. So they're made just for coons. You will catch a few skunks and possums in them. We use the marshmallow, and we put it on the, under the trigger. You want to place them at a 45 degree angle. We use uh, cat food mixed with some uh, fish oil because they really, and they really actually like this stuff. Then we uh, take a stick and we pack it down. And then we put, get some jelly and we just squirt a little bit on the sides. And yeah, that's it. And once they, once they uh, lick that jelly, they're basically yours. I started trapping in 1962. I was about Magnum's age, and I started trapping in uh, early high school, and uh, I've never missed a season ever since. Uh, the first time I picked up a muskrat and saw its fur, the, f the first time I saw the rings on the raccoon's tail, uh, I was hooked just kind of like he is, and uh, I've never missed a season. Oh, we got, we got muskrats. Got a muskrat? Yeah. I think we got a double. We got two? Yeah, we did. All right. Good job, man. Got two muskrats. That's awesome. Most I ever caught in one of these was four, but we're happy with two. I know the landowner's happy with two. Uh, we met on a youth turkey hunt last spring, and we hunted, and we became best bud. One of the things we try to do is really mentor these kids. Uh, take them out, introduce them, no matter what your passion is. Uh, kind of adopt a youngster for a season and take them out, take them fishing, squirrel hunting, coon hunting, whatever, and get these kids out and really get them involved. The trapping is good because they don't have to sit still. They don't have to be quiet. They can, they can move all they want. They get all the activity they want. They get to see plenty of critters and have a big time. I've actually got more kids excited about the outdoors when they learn uh, a lot of the things about trapping. It makes them a little better hunter. It makes them a little better woodsman. They learn how to look for tracks and sign and, and uh, those kind of things, trails and dens and that. And it just really uh, opens up the outdoors to them and starts making them think like an outdoor person. And when they start thinking like an outdoor person, they become one. Yeah, we got one. Sweet. Got a muskrat? Yeah. Trapping's important really for a number of reasons. Of course, it's a heritage and it's an outdoor activity that a lot of people grew up with and love, but uh, it's also important. It's a free public service for the removal of problem animals. Uh, we're of value to these landowners. I use a trapper because up until I met Chet, uh, if I had watermelon crop out, I could uh, lose almost up to 100% of my crop. One year I lost almost every watermelon I had. Crop damage, uh, timber damage, flooding from beaver, uh, muskrats digging into the dams of lakes, causing leaks, predation by coyotes, foxes, bobcats, that sort of thing. Uh, if they're not controlled, they, they reproduce too quickly and they overwhelm the habitat with their presence. And what happens is um, 
you have a lot of extra predation on like ground nesting birds, uh, wild turkey, rabbits, things like that, small game. Another thing is the potential for disease control. Uh, a lot of these uh, diseases that these fur bears can get are density related diseases due to overpopulation. Some of these diseases are, they're transmittable back to humans or pets and domestic stock. It also helps wildlife managers. Uh, some of your animals that are being reintroduced such as otter and some other species are actually trapped and, and relocated. So it's, it's beneficial that way. Uh, wildlife managers also benefit uh, through trapping, uh, for instance, uh, duck marshes where you have duck habitat. If you have heavy predation by raccoons and, and predators, uh, you have a poor duck hatch, a poor waterfowl hatch. It also opens the door for uh, hunting and fishing opportunities of other sorts. Uh, yesterday, the landowner gave Mike here uh, permission to hunt deer on 500 acres because Mike's been taking care of his muskrats. So it benefits wildlife managers, it benefits the public, and uh, it's just a great activity. I've, I've tried all the activities in the outdoors and I love them all, but I mean, to me, trapping is, it's, it's the best.